Welcome, friends, to our devotional study today. We are in the end of Genesis chapter 43. Joseph's brothers have come back down into Egypt to seek some food, to buy food because of the famine that's in the land. And as we began to come into the second half of this chapter yesterday, we saw how that Joseph's brothers are overcome by fear. And uh, it's not a healthy fear that they're overcome by. You know, it, it would be one thing if they were just had a healthy fear because of the position of the person that they were standing in front of. But it's not a healthy fear. It is a guilty fear because they fear that God is getting back at them for all the evil that they have shown toward Joseph, their brother, and even the lies that they had told toward Jacob, their father. So we, we saw that fear in verses 15 through 18, and we also see their confession in verses 19 through 25. Now today we're going to begin in verse 26, and I want to read through to the end of the chapter, and we will go as far as we have time for today. But it says in Genesis chapter 43, and verse 26, we find these words. It says, And when Joseph came home, they brought him the present which was in their hand into the house and bowed themselves to him to the earth. And he asked them of their welfare and said, Is your father well, the old man of whom ye spake? Is he yet alive? And they answered, Thy servant, our father, is in good health. He is yet alive. And they bowed down their heads and made obeisance. And he lifted up his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, and said, Is this your younger brother of whom you spake unto me? And he said, God be gracious unto thee, my son. And Joseph made haste, for his bowels did yearn upon his brother, and he sought where to weep. And he entered into his chamber and wept there. And he washed his face and went out and refrained himself and said, Set on bread. And they set on for him by himself and for them by themselves and for the Egyptians which to eat with him by themselves, because the Egyptians might not eat bread with the Hebrews, for that is an abomination unto the Hebrews. And they sat before him, the firstborn according to his birthright, and the youngest according to his youth, and the men marveled one at another. And he took and sent messes unto them from before him. But Benjamin's mess was five times so much as any of theirs, and they drank and were merry with him. So as we come into these verses, we find that Joseph not only inquires about his father and desiring to know if he's still alive, but we see also that he continues to test the character of his brothers. He wants to know if they've learned anything over these last 20 years and if their character has changed. And we'll see that as we come into these verses. Notice, first of all, in verses 26 through 28, there, there's a contrition before Joseph. They humble themselves. They bow before him. And certainly, as we're going to see, this brings back many, not only brings back many memories, but it also fulfills the dream that Joseph had told to his brothers many years before. Notice verses 26 and 28. It says, When Joseph came home, they brought him the present, which was in their hand, into the house, and bowed themselves to him to the earth. And they answered, verse 28, Thy servant, our father, is in good health, he is yet alive. And they bowed down their heads and made obeisance. That is, there was an expression of submission that they showed toward their brother. Now, as we think about these verses, we are reminded and we're told that as the brothers give their presents that they had brought to Joseph, and keep in mind that present was a symbol of respect for him, not only did they give him the present, but they also, the Bible says, bowed themselves before him. And again, that is a fulfillment of the prophetic dream that is mentioned in Genesis chapter 37. And we're going to go there in just a moment and see that dream and their reaction to it when Joseph told them about this dream. And then we see that they repeated the bowing again after Joseph had inquired about the family and about his father in verse 28. And the significance of the bowing uh, would not have meant anything to the brothers in a few moments as Joseph reveals himself. That significance of the bowing would not have meant anything to them had Joseph not told them his dream back when he was a young fellow. Come back to Genesis chapter 37. Genesis chapter 37, I want to read verses 7 through 9. It says, Genesis 37, verse 7, For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright, and behold, your sheaves stood 
round about and make obeisance to my sheaf. Remember, that's the exact same word that's used in Genesis 43, verse 28, when it says they showed obeisance to him. Now, notice verse 8 of Genesis 37. And his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed another dream and told his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars make obeisance to me. And uh, of course, we know that verse 11 says his brethren envy him. But his father observed the saying. Now as we come into Genesis chapter 43, verses 26 through 28, we see there that uh, this dream is fulfilled. That they do bow down to Joseph. They do show him reverence and respect and submission. As he foretold them through these dreams in Genesis chapter 37. And then we see the reception that Joseph gives him. First of all, in verses 27 and 28, he desires uh, some news about his father Jacob. He wants to know how dad's doing. And it says in Genesis 43, 27 and 28, he asked him of their welfare and said, Is your father alive, the old man of whom you speak? Or is he well? Is he yet alive? And they answered, Thy servant, our father, is in good health. He is yet alive. And they bowed down their heads and made obeisance to him. Now, many people, as they read this verse, they think that's a proper thing for Joseph to do, to probe and to ask these questions about his father's health and whether or not he's still alive, because he would obviously want to know his father's condition. He knows now that Jacob, his father, is an old man. He knows that he's at the age where anything could happen at any moment. So as Joseph sees his brethren, it's only logical that one of the first things that he does is that he asks them of the welfare of his father. Is he yet alive? Is he doing well? What's the condition of his health? Has God continued to bless him? And that's very important for Joseph to know. But he wants to know more than just the condition of his father. You see, asking these questions also helps him to discover the attitude that his brothers had toward their father. Obviously, you can see in the past that they have had little respect toward their father. And he wants to know, has the respect that they have for their father grown? The response of the brethren, of the brothers here, confirms their change. It confirms that they now respect their father. As a matter of fact, they are showing a great deal of respect for their father, Jacob. And that would be encouraging for Joseph for a couple of reasons. Reason number one, it would help him to know that his father is being taken care of. But reason number two, he sees the maturity of them. And as we've noted in the last chapter, Joseph could endow these men now with much favor and possessions because he would not do that if these men were of bad character as they were some 20 years earlier when they had mistreated Joseph. So Joseph here, as we move through this chapter, is continuing, continually examining the character of, their, of his brothers to see if their character have, had changed. And every evidence of change that Joseph sees would be encouraging to him. You know, sometimes, friends, God will put us through tests to reveal to us our true character. God knows what our character is, but God will put us through tests so that we might know what our true character is, that we will see areas of our life that need refining, areas of our life that need more evidence of the fruit of the Spirit, which very simply means that we're surrendered to the Holy Spirit. And as a result of that, there are evidences of that showing up in our life. And God will use that to speak to people that have known us for years as they see what our true character is about and our true character is revealed. And nothing will reveal your character and my character any more than difficulties and trials that come our way. It is a way of bringing out the best in us and, yes, sadly, even the worst in us. And... Uh, I hope that we can say as Job in Job 23.10, He knoweth the way that I take, and when he hath tried me, 
I shall come forth as gold. Next day, we will conclude our study in Genesis chapter 43. Have a great day.